Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov, and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, my guest is John Himmelman. John and his wife, Leilani, both fit into the successful professional lifestyles of Hawaii. John practiced law in Hawaii from 1977 to 1994, 17 years. Then, on Easter Sunday, April 3rd, 1994, John and Leilani set sail for a life on the sea, leaving Hawaii and John's law practice behind forever. They sailed out of Kaneohe Bay, turned south, and never looked back. John and Leilani now live in Auckland, New Zealand. Now, some questions may come to your mind. Why did John leave the legal profession for the uncertainty of the open seas? Why trade the law profession, the security of the law profession for life across the sea? John will talk to us about his sailing yacht and from his sailing lot, yacht, Amazing Grace, in Auckland, where he and Leilani are now preparing for their next sailing adventure around the South Pacific. John, welcome. Aloha. Well, good morning, or as they say down here today, and thank you for having me, Mark. Good day, good day. Good to see you, old friend. Uh, I want to get into why you left the law, but first, why did you get into the law in the first place? What uh, motivated you? What, what, you know, did you want to always be a lawyer, and, and what, what, what did you do in the law? Well, no, I didn't always want to be a lawyer. Uh, I, my reasons are certainly not altruistic. Uh, they were more mercenary. I wanted to have a, um, a profession that would might give me a pretty uh, comfortable uh, lifestyle uh, economically. Um, also, I came out of the uh, era in the late 60s, early 70s, a lot of uh, radicalism, if you will, and becoming a lawyer was attractive from the standpoint of maybe helping uh, the downtrodden, if you will. Okay. But, uh, that was, you know, that was pretty much it. Well, uh, you know, those are two good reasons to become a lawyer, uh, help people and uh, make a living. Uh, and uh, so you, you, you did that, you came to Hawaii. How did, how did you wind up here in Hawaii uh, to start your career? Well, well, I was uh, returning from the sunny Southeast Asia excursion in uh, 1967, uh, well, actually 1969, and uh, my father, who was a career military officer, was stationed in Hawaii. I'd never been there before. So when I came back from uh, Thailand and Vietnam, I um, decided to come to Hawaii and finish university, which I did. And then after that, I went to law school uh, in Southern California. And then we turned back to Hawaii because I did fall in love with it uh, while I was doing undergraduate work at the University of Hawaii and began practicing law uh, there. And in fact, what you didn't mention to your, uh, your audience was you and I were, were partners right. for several years uh, early on in our practice. Right. Well, yeah. And I, I hope that wasn't what turned you off about the law, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, uh, tell me what type of law you practiced while, while you were practicing law. What, what type of things were you doing? Well, I started off doing some criminal defense work uh, when you and I were with uh, Shirley and Jordan. And then um, I sort of spread from that to doing um, general civil litigation, uh, uh, personal injury actions, uh, divorce work. Uh, some contract law. So it was a, a fairly diverse uh, law practice, if you will. So, and, and it, you know, it was quite a few years uh, you were practicing law here, and, and then somehow you got into sailing. How did that happen? How, what, what was your introduction to sailing? Or? Well, you always look for some sort of a, a sporting event or a diversion from law. I'm not a golfer. 
I did get into boating. Um, I'd always sort of liked boating, but never had owned one, a, a boat. And being in Hawaii, of course, surrounded by water, it was sort of natural. So we started off with power boats, and as every boat owner will tell you, when you buy your first boat, uh, you come down with the incurable disease of big itis, which means that you always want a bigger boat. And we started to move up in size, and then uh, I decided that um, motoring around in a power boat, uh, burning all that fossil fuel was uh, not environmentally good. So I came up with this bright idea of getting a sailboat. And uh, so we bought a sailboat and joined Kanye Yacht Club, and it was uh, all uh, uphill from there. Well, okay, so you, you uh, I mean, you had a law career, you're joining the Yacht Club, and you have your yacht out there, and something happened. Uh, something happened, and, and, and you said, well, uh, this uh, is different, and now I have, I, I don't feel the same way, or what, what, what happened that motivated you to change and, and move on, on to the, the yacht as your life? Well, honestly, practicing law became just a chore. I, I didn't like it. Uh, it, it became more burdensome. Uh, psychologically, and uh, I just said, over a period of time, I thought, my goodness, there's got to be something better to do with your life than practice law. As we were members of Kanye Yacht Club, we started meeting people who had done long-distance blue water sailing. And, of course, you know, uh, it's, it's a bit romantic when you start hearing these stories, and it caught my attention. And all of a sudden, I said, look, uh, it's time to really start thinking about doing something else. And uh, by this time, the uh, uh, idea of doing long-distance uh, blue water sailing was uh, very, very attractive. And um, it just sort of evolved into that. Had you ever done it before? Okay. Had you ever... Been, no, uh, no. Uh, we we were doing we were doing cons a lot of sailing around the Hawaiian Islands. I've since learned, having sailed in many other parts of the world, that sailing in Hawaii really is actually terrible. Um, aside from the warm weather and the warm water, there are no anchorages of, of any significance in Hawaii. Uh, the boating facilities, uh, the marinas, and like, uh, leave a lot to be desired. Um, so. It, you know, of course, at that time, I didn't know that, but I was still starting to work up to, to leaving uh, the law, and um, it finally came to a head. I just said, it's got to be, I'm going to do something else. i got to leave, um, and I decided we're going to leave and, and sail off into the sunset. Well, okay, now we're, we'll get into the decision-making in a minute, but was there anything that tipped the scale? Was there anything that, you know said, that's it. Well, I recall I was preparing for a trial, a jury trial, and we were in uh, the judge's chambers uh, going over jury instructions, and I started having uh, hot and cold flashes and feeling faint, and I literally I passed out. And I went, uh, they, of course, the judge uh, kindly adjourned <laughs> the trial. <laughs> And uh, I went to the doctors, and they said, physically, I was okay. They described it or uh, uh, decided that I had a panic attack, and they were probably right. And I came home after that, and I said, if this is what practicing law is doing to me, i got to get out of it. And I would say that that probably was the tipping point. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, we've all encountered stress as lawyers. Uh, you know, that's uh, kind of the name of the game. Uh, and and so that makes a lot of sense, what you just said. Okay, so you had to uh, make that decision. You made it internally yourself. And how did you how did you address everybody else? How did you convince everybody else, especially your your wife, Leilani? How uh, about that? That that's what you you'd like to go. That's where you'd like to see the rest of your life? Well, up to that point, uh, I would have, I was starting a dialogue with Leilani, uh, sort of an ongoing one, 
oh, gee, wouldn't it be exciting to go sailing and uh, wouldn't it be exciting to do something else with our life? And, of course, she looked at me usually with a very jaundiced eye and <laughs> said, you know, what, are you an idiot? You know, I'm perfectly happy doing what I'm doing. But then that, that, that episode with the panic attack and the visit to the doctors and so on and so forth, um, uh, I think convinced her that maybe uh, my continued practice law was not um, a physically and emotionally and mentally uh, good thing to do. You might have heard a, a, a roar going by me as a boat leaving the marina, so I have to apologize no, about fine. the background. You're, you're, on, you're on your yacht right now talking to us in, in Auckland, right? I'm in the cockpit of the yacht. We've moved aboard uh, about uh, a week ago. Uh, we're waiting for a weather window to sail off up to uh, Fiji. Okay. So uh, you, you and Leilani uh, uh, realize that uh, the value of all of the... Uh, monetary rewards and social acceptance from being law may not may not make um, life any better and you look for some other opportunity and you decided to to take off and so what, what did you do well we literally uh, sold every all of our worldly possessions I uh, informed my uh, then law partner, uh, Albert Smith, that I decided to do this. And of course, there were some raised eyebrows. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I just said, it, it's time for me to do something else. And it was really that simple. It was that blunt. And we, we sold everything, uh, had a big farewell party at the Yacht Club. Uh, and uh, sailed off. But it was interesting, the friends and family and colleagues sort of broke down into two distinct um, schools in their reaction to what we were doing. Um, my mother and Leilani's mother particularly uh, felt that we were uh, basically going to sail off and die at sea and nobody would ever see us again. So that was represented one side. Um, many others said, oh, gee, I'm really, really jealous of you. I wish I had the courage to simply sell up and change everything and sail off just like you do, but I don't have that courage. And so I'm going to continue with my mundane life. And that, you know, that's really sort of where it all came down. Okay, and so we, we have a minute before our break. Tell us where you went on this first First trip. The first destination was a thousand miles to south at Palmyra Island, then owned by the uh, ironically named Robinson family from Kauai. And and so you you left uh, the harbor here at, at Kaniohe, and uh, you you just started sailing. You'd never done this before, just you and Leilani on the. Well, now, we had done a practice ocean crossing in um, two years before. Okay. Um, I took my yacht up to San Francisco for a regatta and sailed up from San Francisco back to Kaneohe, but we had a full crew of six on board at that. This last trip, that, that, I mean, sorry, the first trip that, that you took then uh, and on your retirement from law, you and Leilani were alone on the ship. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take a short break right now, and we'll be right back, and I want to find out what happened since and where you're going after. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every other week, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., we have guests on and talk about the fascinating, interesting, and unique partnerships in education that occur across the Pacific Islands with Hawaii, Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, Guam. All these places have really rich local education programs going on, and the exchange among and between these programs is a wealth of great information, helping the islands all learn uh, how to survive and thrive in our ever-changing world. I hope you'll join us on Pacific Partnerships in Education. 
Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. We are back with my old friend and former law partner, John Himmelman. Uh, he is in, on his yacht in Auckland, New Zealand, talking to us uh, about leaving the law and going on his boat around the world and I guess around South Pacific mostly. Uh, your first trip, Palmyra, is that correct, John? That's correct. We uh, That was our first port of call. Uh, that was a rather interesting trip. Uh, we had enjoyed a 16-day passage from San Francisco two years earlier with a full crew of 16 or six people, and it was a delightful sail, and we were sort of expecting the same thing going to Palmyra. About two days out, we hit a pretty horrendous storm, and both of us were uh, seasick and wet and uncomfortable, uh, and it actually was discussed to possibly turn around, but we decided, well, why don't we wait till we get to Palmyra and uh, see what happens. I did mention to Leilani that maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> of course, <laughs> that didn't make a mistake. Uh, well, but we got to Palmyra, and Palmyra was everything that you would have dreamt a South Pacific atoll was. It was idyllic, beautiful, very hot, uh, very humid, but it was almost like a release valve being uh, opened up in terms of our apprehension of continuing on. And from that point on, we just had a wonderful, we've had a wonderful experience um, in sailing. So that first trip was sort of a test uh, in a way. Uh, so somebody, somebody was testing you. Oh, uh, yeah, they were testing us, and uh, fortunately, we passed the test. Uh, otherwise, we, uh, we wouldn't be doing this interview right now. I'd be back uh, pulling my hair out, uh, <laughs> looking at uh, doing uh, law practice and, and so on. So Okay, and so you, you, you didn't look back uh, uh, after you told Leilani this might have been a mistake. Uh, I can imagine uh, what that was, what that discussion was like, and then... But it, it, things seem to, to work better, and since then, what have, what have you been doing with respect to sailing and, and your, your life on the sea? Well, after Palmyra, we spent the next, uh, essentially, uh, two years sailing around the South Pacific. Uh, we, when you're sailing into the South Pacific, uh, you, you do it in terms of seasons based upon the hurricanes. Um, so... The uh, sailing season in, in the South Pacific is during the North Pacific's summertime and the South Pacific's wintertime, which is the out-of-season uh, hurricanes. And then uh, you do that for six months at a time, and then you go down to New Zealand. And that's how we got to New Zealand, was to get out of the South Pacific hurricane season. When I got to New Zealand, much to my uh, surprise, I found out that I could actually qualify for residency. Uh, they had a point system of which you got points for your educational background and years practicing within that profession and so on and so forth. And I qualified, and then we um, went ahead and spent another six months up in the islands, uh, Fiji, Tonga, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, sailing around. And then we finally came back, uh, I think it was in 1997, we came back to Auckland and settled down, and after three years, we qualified for citizenship, so I now hold two passports. And um, then we worked for the about, uh, we did land work for about the next uh, four or five years. And then we discovered that I could qualify for a commercial a skipper's license to run luxury yachts, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and Leilani uh, took courses to become a chef, 
So from 2002 approximately to 2008, uh, we ran luxury yachts and charter yachts in the uh, Caribbean, uh, the Mediterranean, uh, South Pacific, all the way out to Australia. And that was just a wonderful, wonderful lifestyle. And we got paid for it very well. And, and you kept um, Auckland as your home base during that period of time? Yes. In fact, we actually own a, we, we've owned a house since we first moved to Auckland, and we were renting it out during the time that we were overseas for six years working on the boats. And we now just put the house back up to uh, for rent because, as I said, we're waiting for a weather window, which looks to be about two days from now. And we're going to be leaving for 18 months sale uh, this time. But we're not being paid this this time. This is on our own boat. Okay. Well. Well. Okay. Now, here, here's here's the tough question. Now, did you ever want to come back to law after getting on the getting on your your boat and sailing towards the sunset? Did the thought ever come to you? Well, maybe I maybe I should just become a lawyer. Go back to being a lawyer again. Let me put it this way. <laughs> the, a bad day at sea is much better than the best day in the office. So that, that that was the long answer. The simple answer is absolutely not. I never want to be a lawyer again. Okay. All right. Now, and and but but the law helped you get where you are too in, in certain ways, right? I mean, uh, had you not had the, the the you know the resources or the ingenuity or the knowledge of of a lawyer, uh, maybe this other lifestyle wouldn't have been open to you. Well, I will admit that there were certain there are certain aspects of what we've done since we've left Hawaii that uh, my legal background has had some benefit. Uh, these include getting a job at uh, two international insurance companies here in Auckland uh, before we went through the professional sailing. Um, I, they they hired me because not solely because I have a legal background, but it was a major influence. Uh, the other thing that was sort of interesting is that the first yacht that we worked on and ran was owned by an American uh, first American fellow and his wife, and he had a law degree. And age-wise, we were fairly contemporary. Uh, he was slightly older, but the fact that both of us had legal backgrounds, uh, he never practiced law, which was why he was able to afford a multi-million dollar yacht, and I wasn't. Uh, probably explain uh, that, but, uh, you know, all kidding aside, uh, he was able, you know, he and I had a lot of um, points of uh, commonality in our discussions and backgrounds and going to undergraduate and law school and so forth. So that was sort of interesting. I'm not sure that that got me the job, but it was certainly interesting to talk about. Okay, well, there's always contacts, I find, uh, doing this program. There's lots of contacts that you never know come up, and they somehow bring people and experiences together. Uh, now, you're, you're planning a trip right now. Briefly, where, where will you be going on, on your trip? And while you're talking, I hope we can put up a couple photos of your yacht also. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're looking for the weather window. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, it'll open up, and we will head to Fiji. Uh, we're going back to a very remote island we spent some time at last year uh, called Falanga. And we're planning on spending about six months in Fiji. And then instead of coming back to New Zealand, which is what we did last year in October, November, for the, for the start of the hurricane season, we're going to work our way up to the North Pacific, uh, visiting islands such as uh, Wallace, which is a French possession, Tuvalu, uh, Kiribati, uh, which is the location of the famous World War II battle uh, island of Tarawa, and then into the uh, Marshall Islands, where we'll spend the South Pacific hurricane season. And then in uh, April, May of next year, we'll work our way back down through those same island chains into Fiji and probably Vanuatu this time and then back to New Zealand in November of 2019. Okay, yeah, while, while you were talking, we're showing some fantastic shots of, of your yacht, one in the, this beautiful lagoon. Uh, 
Just, just that, very that, picturesque. That lagoon, that lagoon is Falanga, and we're going to go back there. Uh, when you when you look at a photograph like that or a, a place like that, that is what cruising is all about. It's not the passages uh, for which neither Leilani or I really uh, enjoy, but it's getting to destinations like Falanga and uh, uh, getting to know and become friends with uh, islanders uh, who have are pretty remote from what we call civilization. Uh, but they do have Internet, uh, satellite Internet, and Leilani has become... Facebook friends with about half the village there. And, the village has about. Uh, I, I understand you're you're helping them also. You're bringing some things for them. Is that right? Yeah. Um, this year we're bringing uh, about 600 uh, sunglasses, about 700 reading glasses, and the one thing that most people will find a bit surprising. Um, when we were there last year, uh, Leilani asked the ladies, what would you like? And of all things, they said they wanted bras. <laughs> so we got to hold up this uh, charitable organization here in Auckland called Uplift, a very ironic name. And they gave us about 1,000 bras that we're taking, and we're going to have a uh, massive Black Thursday giveaway sale on Kalanga. <laughs> uh, and that's, and that, and that's, a good, that's sort of a good work, a pro bono, if I... If if I may. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, these, these people, Falanga is serviced by a tramp steamer once a month from Suva. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it shows you how remote these, these islands still are in today's day and age. So for them to get any kind of uh, goods uh, down to Falanga uh, is uh, a bit of, a, of a, uh, an effort. And so when we Yachties, and it's not just me, but other yachties do the same thing. We bring things, and I have fishing uh, gear like uh, hooks and lines and sinkers. I have a couple of fishing poles that, uh, that I don't use anymore. I'm going to give away. I've got a spear gun uh, we brought for the kids at the school. The school has 50 kids from grades one through, I think, seven. And so I brought a, a rugby ball and a soccer ball. Those kinds of things. Okay, now we have about a minute left. I'd like you to tell me what have you learned from all of this in that minute? Share with everybody, young and old lawyers, uh, what your thoughts are, and maybe uh, we can also close off with a photo of you, you and Leilani in your cabin, hopefully. Okay. Well, well, first of all, you you need to follow your dream. If you sit around and plan and plan and plan, you will never leave the dock. So finish the planning or stop the planning and just do it. And that's the biggest thing that we've learned is that you need to simply do what is going to make you happy. Um, and uh, if you do that, uh, even if you're working and you love what you do, that's, that's great. But if you don't, and you want to do something else, don't just plan it, actually do it. Uh, otherwise, you'll never, ever uh, um, accomplish anything. And remember, whatever day you spend uh, planning it is a day that you won't have to enjoy it. Well, John, I, I thank you for that advice. And it's good advice even for me at my uh, old age now. I appreciate it very much. And it was very good talking with you. And uh, we are, we are at the conclusion of our talk, and, and you know, good sailing to you. I, I trust that you'll, be, uh, you'll leave in a couple days on, on your next uh, sailing trip, and be, best wishes. Aloha.